long title. It's, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk here and come to Korea, this wonderful country, my first time. It's uh, beautiful. Okay, so it's a uh, uh, it's about a joint work with Megumi and some application of this Newton Akunkov bodies in uh, symplectic geometry. I try to cover all the background. I apologize if I talk too fast because I want to uh, like cover most of the background. Uh, <coughs> Uh, Lazar Sel Mustafa called these uh, bodies Akunkov bodies after Akunkov. I uh, asked God like to call them uh, uh, Newton bodies. Thank you. Uh, uh, Newton bodies because uh, it comes from generalizes Newton polytope of a toric variety. So Newton Akunkov bodies is like a mixture of the two uh, names. Okay, so I'll uh, start with generalities about uh, symplectic geometry. Uh, uh, I apologize to the experts on um, very basic uh, stuff. You can take a nap if you want for uh, 10 minutes uh, and then I'll tell you when to wake up. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, we have a um, two n dimensional real manifold, non degenerate two form. Uh, this formalism is supposed to uh, be a modern formulation of cl Hamiltonian mechanics, classical mechanics. And to each function, uh, you can associate a vector field, which is like a dual of uh, differential of f with respect to omega. And what uh, you think of uh, this is m is phase, a space of a physical system, and uh, f is usually called Hamiltonian of system, usually is energy of the system, flow of the corresponding vector field, which is called Hamiltonian vector field of F, is describes evolution of the physical system. Uh, <coughs> And classically, uh, M is just R2N, omega is a standard symplectic form. Uh, F, for example, uh, you can take uh, sum of Q squared P squares. Uh, in physics, it's, um, the one is kinetic energy, the other one is uh, potential energy. I wrote it the other way. <laughs> P uh, is momentum, P squared should be kinetic energy. Uh, anyhow, uh, uh, this uh, if you take this to be energy of the system, total energy, this uh, 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 describes in physics terms an uncoupled harmonic oscillator. So you have N uh, springs, say they are oscillating, and that's how it's uh, described in Hamiltonian mechanics. Okay. Uh, and Another famous example for symplectic setting is uh, M is sphere, uh, omega is just surface area, it's a two form on sphere. Uh, M, uh, F is the height function. Um, I may draw quickly. You have sphere and you project it on a line. So that's our function F. Okay. And Hamiltonian uh, vector field of F generates S, S1 action, which is rotation uh, of sphere, rotation of the sphere along the uh, axis, which is parallel to this height uh, R. And this really goes back to Archimedes. <laughs> I think he somehow had ideas of symplect Hamiltonian mechanics, symplectic geometry. It's uh, <coughs> a famous theorem of uh, Archimedes, which uh, says that if you have uh, two uh, uh, stripes on a sphere, such that their projection is, has same height, uh, they have the uh, same uh, area. Okay. This is some uh, first examples of a moment map, and uh, you think of it as a toric variety, one dimensional uh, or complex uh, toric variety, uh, etc. <coughs> and uh, this uh, picture of this is which is a cylinder, uh, a sphere inscribed in a cylinder, appears on uh, Archimedes' tombstone. Yes, so. Reference for the tombstone? Uh, uh, <laughs> Google. Well, uh, images. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then symplectic uh, geometry is very nicely, uh, uh, is a nice formulation for conservation laws in physics. If you have two functions, uh, then 
you define Poisson bracket of these two functions by that omega of corresponding vector fields. One checks that a Lie bracket of these guys is again a, uh, uh, this Hamiltonian vector fields is again uh, Hamiltonian vector fields of the Poisson bracket up to a sign and uh, these are all very base, uh, basic uh, like it's a first course in symplectic geometry you check if two things Poisson commute bracket is zero then one is constant along flow of the other one. So if one of them is uh, describing the uh, evolution of system, Hamiltonian of evolution of system, the other one is constant along in time. It's a constant of uh, in time. And you can uh, get, uh, uh, for example, conservation of uh, linear momentum, angular momentum, all this uh, in, uh, out of this theorem. Okay. And <laughs> completely integrable system, if you have a symplectic manifold of uh, two and dimension, uh, a completely integrable system uh, is if you have n functions, n is half of the dimension. Uh, in fact, complete, uh, I can drop complete and just say a bunch of functions are called an integrable system if they Poisson commute and their derivatives are uh, linearly independent and then uh, uh, almost everywhere uh, and uh, if we say it's completely integrable system if uh, you have n of them and one can show is n is maximum number of Poisson commuting uh, functions we can have with these two conditions so whenever you have uh, if you have one function, uh, one Hamiltonian describing evolution of system, if you have other ones which Poisson commute with it, there are constants of motion, it helps you to describe uh, evolution of system easier. The more constants of motion evolution of system you have, it's easier. A, a completely integrated system is when you have the maximum number. This would be as, as dynamical systems, they are most tractable, well behaved. Uh, systems appearing in classical mechanics. So uh, Hamiltonian systems uh, or symplectic geometry or classical mechanics, one really likes completely integrable systems. Okay, and uh, of course for us main example of completely integrable system is toric variety. I'll just uh, describe a construction of a projective, uh, elementary construction of projective uh, toric variety. So you have compact torus, S1 to the n, complex torus, uh, C star to the n, and then fixed bunch of integral points. We think of them as weights of a linear action of torus. So complex torus acts on projective space, CPN, uh, which capital N we also think that is much bigger than dimension of torus, little n. Uh, so it's given by, act, acts by those weights, alpha zero to alpha n. I use shorthand notation, T to the alpha means this monomial uh, T1 to A1, Tn to An. And for simplicity, we assume uh, one, 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 which is like a generic point in the uh, to, uh, in projective space, is ha does not have any stabilizer. So orbit of this point, torus orbit, complex torus orbit of this point is isomorphic to torus itself, and the corresponding toric variety is just a closure of this orbit. So it has an orbit. It has a torus action and an open orbit isomorphic to torus itself. This is uh, a construction of a projective toric variety out of a finite set of integral points. Okay. And I denote it by x sub a. <coughs> uh, uh, Kushnirenko theorem, which Megumi explained uh, a previous talk. Uh, this says that degree of this toric variety sitting in projective space is n factorial volume of convex hull of A. Uh, by the way, an interesting thing is that Asko likes this theorem so much uh, during his uh, mathematical uh, career he found, uh, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, about 15 different proofs of this theorem. <laughs> Uh, worthy of Guinness Book of Records, but I don't think he applied for that. But uh, and uh, the proof, uh, symplectic geometry proof, Megumi explained is also uh, one of his proofs. Um, 
And uh, so uh, little uh, the T was com a compact torus. One, it's very easy to see that it preserves the Fubini H2D symplectic form on CPN, and hence on X is just acting diagonally linearly. And X, this projective vari uh, toric variety becomes a Hamiltonian uh, T space, which means that uh, the action of the group T, Lee group T, uh, comes from a Hamiltonian vector fields or generating vector fields of the group action uh, uh, are Hamiltonian vector fields, meaning that uh, there is a moment map, a mu, uh, such that Hamiltonian vector fields are components of uh, this map mu uh, generate the T action. Okay, that's meaning of a Hamiltonian uh, uh, a group action, or Hamiltonian T space. Uh, and the moment map in this case for uh, linear action of torus on projective space uh, and in particular a torus, torus orbit closure, it's uh, easy to write down some a stupid constant times uh, uh, given by that formula very easy to compute and uh, one can show that uh, image of that map by the way I have written that a uh, mu for t uh, where t is a point in the complex torus or in the open orbit okay so that formula uh, is uh, for moment map on uh, torus uh, orbit open orbit. Okay. And one can show that image of uh, mu is convex hall of A. It's even can, one can think of it as a high school math problem if one knows say exponential functions. So it's, it's an interesting non-trivial non uh, fact. <coughs> okay. And this convex hull is what one usually calls Newton polytope of the given uh, projective uh, toric variety. And uh, this F1, Fn components of moment map are a completely integrable system. Uh, they Poisson commute because a T, uh, our group is abelian. Okay, so the corresponding generating vector fields, uh, 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 their Lie bracket is zero. They commute. Okay. Okay, a baby example uh, is. This, you just take C star action 0, 2, 3. Uh, XA, you can see that it's uh, this elliptic curve uh, g given by Y squared is X cube, or in projective coordinate I have written it, and mu uh, moment map is given by that formula. Image of moment map is one also computes, it just convex all of that finite set, which is interval 0, 3. Okay. Uh, uh, apologies to Bernd, it's a polytope. <laughs> one dimension to <laughs> Okay, um, next example. The uh, next example, which is uh, uh, of interest in representation theory and uh, goes back to uh, Gelleman Sternberg, is a symplectic uh, version of uh, the uh, Gelfand settling polytopes, which Valentina talked about. Uh, so, if X is the uh, flag variety of uh, nested subspaces, sorry, that subs one subset is missing. Anyhow, uh, by the way, uh, it's also good to mention why they call this flag variety because it uh, starts with origin uh, and then one dimensional subspace and then the two dimensional subspace. So, it's a flag. <laughs> <laughs> so each point, each point uh, just <laughs> it looks like a flag. <laughs> and uh, now if we fix a bunch of uh, real numbers, say increasing sequence of uh, uh, n real numbers, we can, uh, we can <coughs> identify uh, all this uh, sequence, all these flags or this sequence of subspaces with Hermitian matrices with given eigenvalues lambda after ordering the eigenvalues in increasing uh, order. That's uh, basically Gramme-Schmidt process. Every f uh, flag has a, uh, can be represented by orthogonal basis, ordered orthogonal basis. And 
in a little bit fancier uh, way, X is a coadjoint, can be identified with a coadjoint orbit for the uh, unitary group. And uh, looking at it this way, one can equip X with a symplectic form. It's also very uh, standard in symplectic geometry. I, of course, I'll not <laughs> go into construction. Uh, so uh, uh, X, uh, with given the choice of uh, uh, lambda, uh, it gives X a uh, symplectic uh, structure. And also a uh, flag variety also given a <coughs> such a lambda where lambdas, if they are uh, integers, uh, uh, you get a so-called weight and uh, then there is irreducible representation associated to lambda and corresponding projective space and there is this also well-known uh, generalized Plucker embedding of flag variety in this projective space and uh, there is one Fubinier Schudimetric on projective space then induces a symplectic form on X. One can show that it coincides with Cast and Kirilla form uh, as a coadjoint orbit. So all these things are related. So very good question. The dynamical system comes from the group. Uh, so so, think, so the, what's the dynamical system in this uh, so, dynamic, whenever you have a group action, depends if one direction you have to ch fix and then you get a dynamical system. Now I'm going to give a completely integrable system. Yes, but give a one, uh, uh, Gilliman and Seme com constructs a completely integrable system. Okay. So, so, part of it comes from the group, so part of it comes from some symplectic tricks with the symplectic slice there. It's, it's very important to understand. So there's a part of it that really just comes from the group. Well, I was just trying to understand, well, where is the dynamical system? Not yet. There is nothing yet. Okay. Yeah. okay. So these are the Hamiltonians. Uh, so uh, if uh, one point in the flag variety represented by a Hermitian uh, matrix, uh, then I also define X sub, so Hermitian matrix X, I define X sub I, uh, X sub i to be uh, just take the first n minus 1 by n minus 1 sub matrix of X. Okay, and then look at the eigenvalues of uh, X1, X2, X3, uh, etc. So sub matrices from X make it a smaller and smaller. And it's a linear algebra theorem or difficult. Uh, not an uh, easy exercise to show that. I think it's uh, usually it co comes from so-called current principle to show that these eigenvalues for these sub matrices uh, satisfy these inequalities. Where uh, this means, as Valentino also was using this uh, convention, uh, mu it, this writing these numbers in, uh, uh, in this triangular array means mu one one is between lambda one lambda two and uh, so on. Okay. Uh, so uh, mu ij's define functions, uh, which we think of Hamiltonian functions, uh, uh, on flag variety. Each one of them you pick, you have a, a dynamical system. And Gilliman and Stenberg proved that these functions are, uh, uh, give a completely integral system means they all Poisson commute. But there is a catch here. Uh, if there are equalities between those uh, uh, functions, uh, they, may, uh, they may not be uh, differentiable. So there is a, some, uh, a small subset of X on which these functions are not differentiable, but they are uh, uh, continuous everywhere. Differentia not differentiability comes from the fact that uh, uh, if two coordinates are equal, then you have a choice, like basically quotienting by permutation. So anyhow, uh, so uh, it's a complete integrable system up to the fact that some places they are not differentiable. And the image just by what uh, this looking at triangular Array, the image is a uh, Gelfand Zetlin polytope of uh, associated to lambda just by uh, definition. Okay. 
And I always uh, say that uh, one of the difficulties to work in representation theory and working with this Gelf and Settling polytopes is a uh, spelling of the name Settling. Uh, there are uh, like a million ways to write it. And if you Google search for some result and use the wrong spelling, you may like not find s certain papers. <laughs> like they write it with T, S, C, and uh, I have recently switched to Valentina's way of writing, which is with Z, and her argument is that uh, Settling, wh while he, he was Russian, but has uh, a German background, so it should be written with Z. <laughs> uh, and so we make it motivated by this example, make a little bit bigger, uh, a dif little bit a slightly modified version of uh, a completely integrable system for uh, algebraic variety. So say X is algebraic variety of complex dimension N with some symplectic form on its a smooth locus. And then you have these functions, uh, we call them completely integrable system if they are continuous everywhere and on some open subsets uh, inside the smooth locus, they are differentiable and linearly independent on this uh, u, uh, open dense u, and pairwise Poisson commute. So uh, that's uh, a version of completely integrated system for possibly singular uh, algebraic varieties. Okay, and uh, the Gelfan uh, settling system was one example of this. And now the connection with uh, now I want to make connection with this newton akunkov bodies. So just quickly repeat this. The setup, you have a projective variety uh, in sitting inside some projective space and it has a homogeneous coordinate ring. If we fix a Zn valued valuation uh, and some section, uh, Zn valued valuation on uh, field of rational functions, one can associate to this value semigroup of our algebra as well as, as, well as corresponding uh, uh, body. And the value semigroup, you just apply valuation uh, uh, to uh, elements of your algebra. Uh, but uh, each element of the coordinate ring is a section of line bundle. I want to make it a rational function, so I divide by h to the k. So f over h to the k is a rational function. Anyhow, so that's a usual construction of a semigroup associated to uh, our graded algebra. Okay, and <coughs> As Megumi mentioned, the main property, and also Jesse mentioned in her talk, main property is that uh, the growth of Hilbert function of A, which is degree of the variety, is given by a volume of a delta, or more precisely, n factorial volume of a delta. So the purpose of our construction here is to realize delta, this body, as image of a certain map which we think of as moment map or an uh, image of a completely integrable system. So the question uh, motivating this work is that is there a good continuous map from variety to delta, uh, generalizing uh, the uh, Torres uh, case. Torres case, everything was absolutely uh, concrete and explicit. Okay. <coughs> but in general, delta may not be even a polytope and Okay. In general, uh, it's not known how to do this uh, yet. Okay. But our approach and our result is this. So uh, we assume this uh, strong condition that the value semigroup S uh, for our homogeneous coordinate ring is a finitely generated semigroup. This is a strong uh, condition. There are not n uh, any good criteria known to guarantee that, but it happens in s many good examples, especially the ones coming from symplectic, uh, sorry, representation theory. Okay, clearly from out of construction, uh, if your semigroup is finitely generated, corresponding body is a polytope, rational polytope. Okay, we equip our variety X sitting in projective space uh, with a Keller form. Fubinier should be killer for. Uh, notice that, uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, 
Here, there is no f uh, symplectic form or Keller form yet in the, uh, the original construction. Anyhow, okay. Uh, so the theorem, uh, our theorem is that so assuming finite generation of the value semigroup, uh, there exists a completely integrable system on X, meaning that on some open dense subset of X. Uh, uh, they Poisson commute, they are differentiable Poisson commute, linearly independent, they are continuous everywhere on X, and image of uh, the map mu, which we call it like a generalized moment map, is exactly the Newton Akunkov body. And moreover, this is even a stronger than a completely integrable system. Uh, these guys generate a torus action on that dense open subset. And even more so, inverse image of interior of a body is contained in this uh, good open dense subset U. It's basically under the, con the finite generation condition, uh, uh, it says that X has a torus action on a dense open subset of maximum dimension. Uh, so it's a big chunk of X looks like a toric variety. <laughs> and this uh, setup, meaning that when you have a finitely generated semigroup associated to X for certain uh, polytope, for certain valuation, appears in many examples as I mentioned. Okay, examples include flag varieties, and Schubert varieties, spherical varieties, uh, and polygon spaces and so on, almost. Uh, and so uh, some of these uh, spaces, for example, polygon spaces have natural, uh, sim uh, completely integrable systems. And one can uh, investigate uh, what's the connection with our integrable system constructed in that general setup and in each uh, special example. Okay, I haven't yet told you uh, how this uh, we prove existence of this uh, com to, uh, completely integrable system yet. Uh, it's, uh, the construction is very general and so in some ways it's not uh, as explicit as one would like. Okay, so we use what is called the toric degeneration. So kind of the construction is cheating. We know integrable system on toric variety, we just deform toric uh, our original variety to a toric variety and exploit the integrable system there. Okay, so what is called the toric degeneration? If if you have a family of varieties over C, uh, irreducible varieties over C, uh, such that it's flat, means the dimension doesn't change. <coughs> dimension of fibers. Um, secondly, it's trivial away from zero and all the fibers uh, except that fiber at zero, all other fibers are isomorphic to X. So our, the variety we have started with. And also the special fiber is a toric variety. So it has some torus action with respect to which it's a toric variety. This such a thing is called the toric degeneration of X to toric variety X zero. Okay, and uh, there is a general con algebra construction uh, for uh, such kind of families, and uh, this. Uh, comes from the idea of degenerating a polynomial to its uh, leading term. Okay, so <laughs> I'll come back to that in a second. Um, but now, uh, how we can, uh, how do we want to pull back integrable system on toric variety to the uh, our generic fiber X? And the differential geometry tool is called gradient Hamiltonian vector field. If you have a Kähler manifold. Uh, with a holomorphic map, so if it's a f uh, again a family given by a holomorphic function pi. Okay, uh, one can take because it's scalar; it has Riemannian metric, it has symplectic metric, and gradient of real part of pi. One can easily check it's a minus Hamiltonian vector field of imaginary part of pi. So 
This vector field, which is gradient, is also Hamiltonian. <laughs> That's why it's called gradient Hamiltonian. And uh, what uh, to <coughs> we normalize it, so divide by a square of uh, length of a uh, gradient and one can verify uh, these two facts that flow of uh, this uh, vector field v pi uh, sends a fiber xs to xs minus t whenever defined if you notice when the real part is zero uh, then uh, the vector field is uh, Sorry, when the gradient is zero, the vector field is not defined. So it's defined away from the uh, critical points. And if we uh, start with a uh, variety instead of a manifold, then we should also ignore the uh, singular points as well. And another property is that it preserves a symplectic structure. That comes from the fact that it's Hamiltonian. Okay, so idea of proof of our theorem is that when uh, s this value semigroup is finitely generated one can degenerate x to a toric variety associated with delta more precisely associated to the semigroup uh, because uh, or or to a toric variety whose normalization is toric variety of delta. These are usually, th this uh, explicitly appears constructed in Dave Anderson's paper, but the general idea construction is well known in commutative algebra, say, or algebraic geometry, usually called Sagby or Grobner degenerations. Okay. Then there is some uh, analysis to do to show that the gradient Hamiltonian flow extends to a continuous function. This is uh, not trivial and one should use uh, so-called uh, Voyashevich inequality. However, be careful, it's uh, not pronounced L but rather W. So, <laughs> a Voyashevich inequality. And this is well-known inequality for gradient of analytic functions. Also, it's important, it doesn't hold for general uh, differentiable functions. We have also singularity, so a more complete, sophisticated version of this inequality is needed for algebraic sets. Okay, well, oh, I'm running out of time. Anyhow, soon we'll be over, and then so uh, uh, we have uh, this flow extends to a continuous function from x to the toric variety and then we know we have a completely integrable system on our toric variety uh, by the way i have to say it could be highly singular but at least on the open dense uh, orbit it has integrable system and then we just pull it back okay an integrable system on toric variety as uh, we observe we have an explicit formula. It's of course continuous. is given by some explicit formula. Okay, so that's uh, basically the 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 way we construct this uh, integrable system. Uh, a really baby example, a kindergarten example. So we have an elliptic curve, and you can degenerate it into family y squared x cubed plus c. As c goes to zero, it degenerates to a cuspidal cubic. And maybe I can also draw a little picture here. So elliptic curves topologically, okay. Finally, I said something about topology. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an elliptic curve. Uh, topologically is a torus. This family degenerates it to a pinched uh, sphere, so uh, this uh, uh, circle and the other circle are pinched to one point and uh, this guy has a, the circle action or uh, is, is like something like this. I think you want to draw the square. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, if we think of this as uh, the uh, torus, uh, the elliptic curve or a donut and then uh, the circle action uh, will be like this that's inside of the square is that open then subset and the boundary uh, collapses to one uh, point this pinched point <coughs> okay uh, and okay and okay sorry but you're going the other way. You're starting from the right side and you're pulling it over to the left side. 
this is a storage variety. This is the origin. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So we have this circle action. Yes, you are. Yes, uh, this already known. Yes, we can we pull back this to here. Thank you. Uh, so uh, also, uh, I should say uh, one question. This approach uh, uh, is promising to answer. Is give. Uh, Lower bounds for Gromov width of projective varieties is a difficult question in uh, symplectic geometry, symplectic topology uh, to for uh, different varieties or many symplectic manifolds. See what's the biggest uh, symplectic ball you can uh, embed in your variety, and uh, if you have a big torus action on open dense subset of your variety. Uh, it already implies uh, some uh, bound on the Gromov width of your variety. And uh, I'm hopeful that one, we can generalize this construction to a case where it's non-finitely generated semigroup, meaning that for any projective variety, then it would imply that uh, Gromov width of any projective variety is bigger than or equal to one. Okay, <coughs> and this is a so-called Biron's conjecture. Okay. I think uh, that's it. That's Pittsburgh uh, <coughs> hockey team, Penguins. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, these are some relevant papers. Thank you very much.